Hi, in today's video I'm going to explain if electrolysis causes scarring or pigmentation. This is a question that I get asked the most and it's something that stops people from getting electrolysis done. On one hand they want their unwanted hair removed and then on the other hand they don't want to deal with scarring and pigmentation. I first want to explain the difference between the two. A scar is to do with the texture of your skin. So if you've noticed that your skin isn't completely smooth, there's parts that are slightly raised or you've got pit in, that's a scar. Pigmentation is to do with the colour of your skin, so if there's certain damage in the area, the colour of your skin could be lighter or darker. There is a small risk of electrolysis causing scarring or pigmentation, and it's down to either the beauty therapist doing the treatment incorrectly, or it's down to the customer not following the aftercare advice properly. One thing that the beauty therapist could possibly do wrong is use the incorrect needle size. The beauty therapist is trained, whoever's doing your treatment should be fully qualified. This isn't a mistake that should happen, it is very easy to know what size to use. But just to give an example, if the beauty therapist uses a needle that's too big for the hair that they're dealing with, when that needle goes into the hair follicle, it could possibly stretch it out and cause damage, and that could lead to scarring or pigmentation. Even if they have the right needle size, if they insert it incorrectly, that could cause damage as well. Even if the beauty therapist does everything correctly, something else that can cause damage to the skin is the customer. So for example, if you have scabs after your electrolysis session, even if it's mild, if you pick those scabs off, you could damage your skin. If you exfoliate your skin too soon and you end up taking these scabs off when the skin underneath hasn't healed yet, that can lead to pigmentation or scarring. Imagine if a customer just had a really intense session of electrolysis, their skin is red, it feels hot, they may have some bumps, these are completely normal. If that customer doesn't use the recommended products after, such as aloe vera gel for example. On top of that, if they also go out into the sun without wearing SPF, these are the sorts of things that can lead to damage. I have a video on aftercare advice for electrolysis, I'll put it in the eye at the top here, and I'll also link it in the description box below. Another thing that customers experience, including myself, is a mark being left behind. These marks are not always permanent, your skin could still be in the healing process. If you have seen my electrolysis journey, if you look at the before and after pictures, you'll see that in the before pictures there are some dark marks, and then in the after pictures those marks have finally faded away, so they're not always permanent. If you have a scar, it can take around two years to heal, depending on how severe it is, and for that reason it's not always clear if the scar is permanent or not. Sometimes your skin can fully heal from it if it is really mild but I am planning on making a video on how to reduce scarring and pigmentation if you have experienced it. I'm going to save it for a separate video though because there is a lot that I need to go through in terms of products that you can use and professional treatments that you can get done in the salon. Some people have asked if I personally have experienced scarring or pigmentation from my journey. So I had electrolysis done on my chin and neck area for three years. Now I just maintain the results because of my PCOS and then I had a few sessions on my chest hair I have absolutely no scarring, but I have a teeny tiny amount of pigmentation. The lady that I used to go to before, I used to be left with quite a lot of scabbing, and my skin used to feel itchy, which is normal when your skin is healing. There's histamine going to the area that helps heal the skin and it causes itching, but I would accidentally scratch some of the scabs off, and that's what's caused my pigmentation. My pigmentation isn't that visible at all. It's very, very mild. It's a little bit on this side and the other side here, and then a little bit on my neck. If I could possibly take a picture of it, it is really hard to catch it in the camera, but if I can, I will put it on the screen. There are teeny tiny white dots where the skin in that particular area has been damaged and the cells in that area is not producing enough melanin and that's why it's lighter. When I first noticed this, I didn't know it was pigmentation, I just thought it was my skin. Because I'm quite fair, especially in the winter, and my skin's quite thin, I thought it was just the structure of my skin. But then one day, I noticed this on a customer. She had it on her cheeks, 
and I kind of sort of moved her skin around, sort of pinched it, stretched it out, sort of moved it around and I noticed that it is pigmentation. And then I had a closer look at my skin and I noticed that it wasn't really anywhere else apart from very particular areas where my scabbing was quite itchy and I used to scratch it off. It definitely is pigmentation, it's not the structure of my skin but it is very, very minimal, it personally doesn't bother me. But if you have a darker skin tone and you experience this, it could possibly be more visible on you. In the summer, when I got a tan, I didn't notice that it was more visible. If this changes, I will let you know, but so far I haven't noticed it becoming more visible. I still wanted to tell you so that I am 100% honest, completely transparent. I want to tell you every single thing that I notice, even if it's very mild. Like, I could have easily said, I don't have any pigmentation, but when I do stretch out my skin in this area and I look really closely, there are small white dots where I have caused damage and it is it was my fault because I scratched the scabs off. If you know that you will follow the aftercare advice properly, but you're worried about the beauty therapist, which you shouldn't be because they're trained, but just to make you even more comfortable and confident, I have made a video on how to find a good place and I'll link it in the eye at the top and in the description box below. It's just a video that will make you a little bit more confident in what you could possibly look out for. I hope that this video has made you feel a little bit more comfortable because it is a small risk and if it does happen, it is quite minimal as well in most cases. So I hope that it answers your question. That's it from me today. I hope to see you next time. Bye.